Hey everyone, and welcome to this mini series on goal setting and getting things done from a godly perspective. Today we are talking about creating your ideal schedule. And so we're going to talk about how you go through that. So whenever you create your ideal schedule, the first thing that I'd recommend that you do is you do a time inventory. So with a time inventory, basically you write down the week, you want to pick a normal week, Don't pick the holidays. Don't pick when everybody's sick because that won't give you an idea of what's going on. Basically, this is like your data and you want to make sure you have good data. So what you're going to do is you are going to write down for every day of the week the things that you're doing. I would recommend that you say, you know, at the top of the hour or every two hours, you write down what you're doing. So if you wake up at five, you say wake up and then at seven, you write down you did your morning routine, maybe you took the dog out, maybe you got ready, maybe you had a cup of coffee, and then you write that down in little blocks of time. I would I would set it up like a spreadsheet and then just fill in your time. As you go throughout the week, you want to document everything and be specific about it. If you are spending time on social media or if you are spending time um, not doing the thing that you're supposed to be doing then, so let's say you're supposed to be working on chores around your house, but really you're spending that time, um, you know, reading or uh, looking at your phone, then what you're going to do is you'll write down, I was looking at my phone. Don't say what you were supposed to do, that you were supposed to be vacuuming. You were doing social media or Facebook or something like that. Then after you finish your time inventory, you have to analyze that data. So basically just like you would with the budget where you look at your previous budget and all your expenses and then you group things together into categories, you need to categorize the way you spend your time. So you're going to categorize, uh, some things will be kind of simple like sleeping. Okay. Well, it's just sleeping, um, eating, same thing, but sometimes it might be like, you know, household chores. You have to figure out, okay, what are you including in household chores? Is that laundry? Um, is laundry its own category? It could be that, uh, you know, errands is errands, just whenever you're going to the grocery store, is that going to be its own thing? So you have to kind of figure out the categories that you want to include. But what you do is you write down the categories and you add up the number of hours spent. Then you need to decide. And I would go ahead and write it down. I would say, I want to spend more time on this, less time, or keep the existing time. And so that just gives you some um, built-in reflection as you go through this. Sleeping and eating, again, probably that won't change you're probably spending enough time. Maybe you need to spend more time sleeping. I don't know, or less time, but some of the things you may decide like spending time on technology, social media, things like that. You may decide that you need to spend less time, uh, with work. If you have a goal or a project around the house that you need to get done, maybe you need to spend more time doing that. Maybe you need to spend more time planning. Then you use these things to create your schedule. Now, the way I do my schedule is different than the way most people do their schedule. Most people do their schedule in a vertical planner where they, you know, time block their schedule or they kind of group things together. But I do my schedule based on a cyclical rhythm of the day and of the week. So basically, I literally use a circle and I plan my day kind of as this repetitive schedule. And the way I do this, because every day is a little bit different, is I do this for my day and then my week and then my year. So my day is I literally have um, at the top of the circle, I have nighttime, kind of like you think of like midnight. And then in the other bottom of the circle, I have midday. And then I have this circle that I write down the things that I want to do. So I write down the time. So I might say, you know, I want to be sleeping from 10 to 5 in the morning or really nine to five, I would try to be in bed a little bit earlier. And then I try to do my morning routine from five to nine. And then I have this kind of work time and then I eat and then I have more work time or family time. And then I have food again. And then I have kid time. So playing with my kids, uh, family time, and then, um, the bedtime routine. And then it starts all over again. And then for my week, I talk about, you know, having a Sabbath or Sunday rest day where we have church and we spend time together. And then Monday and Tuesday is like work time. I have church again on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. And then Saturday is family time and work time. And you can talk about the different routines and rhythms you want to have in your week. We try to get together with our friends about every other week. And so doing that would be a rhythm that I could write down that Tuesday is people day. So I might try to spend time with people. Maybe I realize that I don't really spend time with people or with your relationships. It's hard to get away from work and home to do that. Well, you could schedule that time into your day. Then you could do the same thing with your year. Again, I have it where I have December at the top where like nighttime is 
December is the same place, that kind of midnight time. And then I have, you know, the summer months is the midday. And I talk about how we should have this rest time during like this Advent. And then we have, you know, Lent where you have this fasting time and then you go into ordinary work time and vacations and then you go back up and I could see, okay, when do I have these vacations built in? When do I have this work time built in? I think doing a cyclical calendar, it allows for a rhythm of your day. One of the important things that you have to talk about with creating a cyclical calendar is anchors in your day. Anchors are things that trigger you to start doing other habits. So if I know that in my day, I want to do my morning routine, or maybe I want to uh, establish a time that I'm working on something. What I would do is I would establish an anchor in my day. So maybe, you know, in the morning, I always do my morning routine, which is I wake up and I unload the dishwasher, have a cup of coffee and do my Bible reading. That is an anchor in my day. So I wake up and I remember, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Then breakfast would be another anchor where after breakfast, I try to do kind of like a school preschool activity with my son and uh, we try to clean up around the house. And then at lunchtime, uh, that's an anchor that says, okay, it's about to be time for nap time, which is my work time. And so I just have these anchors built in my day. Planning out your cyclical calendar will help you to develop these anchors because it, it just shows your day in a more clear schedule instead of having everything spread out where you have to write down um, in a vertical calendar kind of these repetitive things you can see okay I have a normal rhythm to my day and a normal rhythm to my week how could I add in other things that I want to to make it more balanced so that is how I do my ideal schedule if you would like a copy of the document that I'm talking about you can go to a more beautiful collective.com and you can find it there hope you'll join me for the next episode